For just a moment, why don't you glorify the name of the Lord in this place? Oh, come on, we want to magnify the name of the Lord. I want to see his glory. I want to see his power and might. I want to see him. In the name of Jesus, would you work among us, Lord? Your presence is here already. I feel his presence in this assembly already. No telling what the Lord is doing. Amen. He's at work. He is ministering. He is touching. He is preparing. I'm, I just want to get in alignment where the Lord wants to work at. I want to say, Lord, I want to show up. I want to be right here. Amen. I appreciate every one of you here this morning coming into the house of the Lord and uh, to lift him up, to glorify him today. And we have, we have exchanged our appreciation yesterday across our world. Amen. And I, I thought, you know, probably, and this is just me, I'm, I'm probably wrong, but I, I, I thought for a moment it's probably the last prayer offered day of the entire year. A day that we celebrate, we know that that's probably not the exact date, but it is a day that we celebrate, amen, the birth of Christ. And I thought, you know, it's probably uh, 
and, and call me guilty because I, I didn't offer uh, extended prayer yesterday. I prayed, but not extended, as probably some of you. Now, you probably an exception to the rule. Amen. But for the most part, we get caught up in family. We get caught up in visitation. We get caught up in, in all those sugars calling us by name. And, uh, but I'm glad today that we have an opportunity to come to the house of the Lord. And I wonder if you could just smile real big. Amen. Just say, I love you, Jesus. Lift up your hands and ask him to work in this place today. Oh, we love you, Lord. We are so grateful for all that you have done. We're thankful for your provision, for your strength. We are delighted to be able to be called the children of God today. Oh, would you work? Would you anoint? Would you move in this place today? We're so grateful. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Sister Charlotte, we're so glad to have you here this morning. Oh, it's always good. Always, always good. Amen. Would you come up and give a sermon? No, I'm telling <laughs> I love messing with people. Amen. Just that quick little release of phrase and that blood pressure just skyrocketed. <laughs> Amen. I love God's people. Amen. Good to see Brother Nathan all the way from somewhere. Amen. Serving our country and good to have his. Uh, where she done disappeared? Uh, she's somewhere. She's in the she's in the sound booth. Good to have his daughter, and may have his wife later, or may not. Just depends if she loves him. And no, I'm teasing. She's got obligations. We're glad to have y'all here today. Love you, and uh, oh, what a fine young man, brother Jeff. Amen. Where where'd you disappear to, brother Jeff? Amen. We love you wherever you at, and. Uh, uh, Appreciate this family. Turn around and greet someone. Would you tell them how much you love and appreciate them being in the house of the Lord today? Amen. And why don't we just glorify the wonderful name of the Lord today in song, lifting him up.
feel his presence if you don't feel the presence of the Lord I would just say God help me to be able to feel the presence of the Lord amen I I love the fact that when I read the Word of God I see in multiple positions of Scripture that God is favorable to the seed when you look at what he does oftentimes he his initial creation was formed with the reproduction but that reproduction consisted of a seed that seed would have to be nurtured that seed could be great and spectacular it can be magnificent and it could be mighty or that seed could lie dormant without being productive I, I, I look this year, God's done some wonderful things, and we've been sustained so, so beautifully by the presence of the Lord. Yes. Amen. We're comfortable. We, we've had the amenities necessary for, for comfort. We've been blessed. Amen. We've had tremendous services throughout the year. And while we've had a couple of little hiccups here and there, we're still standing. Yeah. Amen. I, I, I got me a, a really good Christmas present. I got to brag. I'm sorry. So you guys didn't get what I got. Amen. But I, I felt a heavy box, and I was so excited, man. You never know what it is. And I opened it up, and it was a, a clown punching bag. My wife outdone herself this year on the gift. And I thought, you know what? I'm not going to keep, I'm going to blow that, that dude up, and I'm going to bring him in my office, and when I'm working with some of you couillons, and we got problems, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you the spill, because most of the time, you don't listen anyway, I'm just going to bring you in that office and tell you, punch the clown, punch the clown, and that's going to fix everything, but I'm glad that God gave us strength. Amen. In our folly and in our failure and in our weaknesses that he made us strong and he made us overcomers. We're victorious, not because of us, but because of him. And I said all that to put it in the framework that the seed that God has created within us. Amen. A brand new structure. Really, the new year doesn't launch brand new opportunities any greater than yesterday. But the mindset of humanity seems to create that pattern, and so we will continue to build on that pattern. But your, your, your best life is not the life where you have accumulated the biggest toys or the greatest income. Your best life is where you let the seed blossom, and you let the seed grow the branches where the branches desire to expand to. And I hope that I hope that in your mind, I, on this last Sunday service of 21, I hope that in your mind that you can see God doing magnificent things in you. Because if he does them in you, it's going to affect the church. 
if he does magnificent things in your life, those branches are going to extend out and we are going to feel the effects of what God is doing in your life. And so don't limit yourself. Amen. Give the proper care and nurture that that seed needs. Grow your relationship with the Lord. Amen. Grow your walk with God personally. And I believe that if you'll get that personal work with God and that personal relationship with God, then it will affect those that are around you. I want to see God do great things in the year to come. I really do. And, 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 and uh, don't, don't be too disappointed with me, but we've got, we've got multiple fishing trips planned for this church. But it's probably not the rod and reel in the boat. Amen. I believe with all my heart that it, we're going to focus on this coming year. Amen. On, on fishing, soul winning, planting seed, loving people, caring about them. No matter what they act like, look like, talk like. It doesn't matter where they come, what their background is, what their education is. We're going to go fishing. And, and, and you know, even, even, even the, the worst catch on a fishing trip is still exciting. You can pull you can pull in a old oh hard head catfish. Now I know all of, most of y'all throw that back, man. We cook that down in a, a catfish cubion with the head, and that's the best for us where I'm from. I know most people throw the old yellow cat back. That's trash fish. But but if if you get the fish in the right hands, ooh, let me preach a little bit. If you get the fish in the right hands, he can make a masterpiece out of the fish. Amen. I wasn't much of a keeper, but the Lord, I, he's still working on me. Now, don't, hold on. Give me room for improvement, family. He's still working on me, but I, I come a long ways. And, and, and if we'll have this mentality that every soul that comes through this door that, oh, I look like that at one time, or I act like that at one time, or, oh, man, they got an advancement. They're better off than I was when I come into the house of God. And you'll start looking at them as, as a seed that God can use and transform. I want to be a part. Amen. If I can't get a bucket of soil to put under my seed or under my tree or nurture my tree, I want to get a little bit of water. But I want to be a contributor on every level. Would you make up your mind that you are going to be a contributor? You're not going to be a naysayer, but you're going to be a contributor. If you're not growing like you won't go find somebody else that's growing and you encourage them and you build them on and you pray for them, you invest in their seed for a little while, and then you get back to your seed and you keep nurturing your seed and become the best you. Become the best you that God Amen. Has called you to be. Amen. There are no limits. There are no limits. Amen. Uh, 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 I, I do Jeeps, and one of the packages that I do in a lot of the Jeeps is no limits. That's a custom package that I put on the Jeeps. And uh, when I look at God's people, I'm thinking, you know what, God? There's really no limits how many families you can win. There's no, no limits. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. There's no limits. Amen. Get out the box and think of something and do something that you have not done in your life. And match that up with the hand of God and let God be the difference maker. Amen. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm closing my little, my little sermonette with this. Pray over your finances. Pray over your family. Just be careful how you pray over that you want to grow in your family. I prayed over, over our family to grow, and I wasn't, I, looks like I might be getting a son-in-law in the package. So be careful how you pray over growth in your family. Man, you think he would take no for an answer. I told him no twice. He still come back and ask again, and I just, I, I ran out of excuses the third time. But congratulations. Amen.
Congratulations. Amen. Be the best you. And put God over all that you engage yourself in this year coming. And there's no possibility, impossible situations that you will encounter. If you, if you slip this coming year, get back up and stay the course. Write it down, whatever you want to accomplish, write it down and lay your hands on it. Pray over it, put it in your Bible, get it out of your Bible every day. Pray over what you're feeling in your spirit, in your heart, and nurturing it. Nurturing what God has put in your heart and your spirit. And uh, he, he told a writer, he said, he put it this way in pen and paper. He said that God would give you the desires of your heart. Now, in some sense, I believe that God gives you that desire. Amen. Not necessarily that if you want that car, that, he, that, that he'll go and get the car for you. But I believe that the desire that the writer was putting was that, amen, if you've got a heart to do something for God, that God put that in you, that, that burn, that sensation to, to pray thing or to pray or to, uh, to be a witness or to, to teach a Sunday school or to be a soul winner or to be a musician or, or to just be a good disciple of Christ. He puts that desire inside of you. I want to be my best me. And I don't want to look back. I want to look forward. The best me now. Amen. God bless you. Why don't we go to the Lord in prayer this morning. I want us to pray for uh, Rochelle needs a touch, needs a miracle from God in her body. Uh, my sister Cynthia needs a miracle from God in her body. And uh, uh, very, very uh, urgent situation there. Uh, my mother needs a touch. Amen. I wonder if you have an unspoken request just by the lifting up of your hands. Our many families that are out with families or traveling, that God will keep his hand upon them. Amen. In the days to come. And if you would like to be anointed with oil over a particular situation, we would like to invite you to come to be anointed today. As we take our needs to the Lord today, Father, we come. Oh, what a name you have given us. A name we celebrate as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. A name that we, we just admonish today. And Lord, we bring our needs before you, those that have been verbally addressed today, that you would move upon these urgent, urgent situations. That God, we need a miracle. We need a miracle in many of these cases today that you are able to perform and to provide today. Lord, I pray for our family, our church family, the hands that have been raised. I pray for your help and your anointing. I pray for your healing and your intervention that, God, you will touch these situations. And we give you the glory. We give you the honor today. For you do it, God. We recognize it that only you can do some things that are beyond our ability. We lift you up in Jesus' name. We lift you up in Jesus' name. Would you just thank him for a moment? Just kind of, just envision it's done. Envision that he's showing up. Envision that you're favored of the Lord. I'm not going to focus on all the bad and the ugly and the wrong and the negative. I'm somebody. I'm special. I'm God appointed and God called. Lord, I pray that you would begin to do it. And we thank you for the working of the hand of God. We thank you for the release of your power and your might. We thank you for the strength, God. Rest upon us today, God. Rest upon your people today. Move in our church. Move in our families. Move in our homes, God. We give you glory. We give you glory. I just feel something special. Just kind of linger right there. I feel a special presence of the Lord working right now. Oh, God, we're asking you to work. We're loving on you right now, God. Lord, we're so grateful for what you do. You know all things. You do them accordingly to your plan and your purpose. You're all seeing eye. You're all knowledgeable and knowing ways of our 
situations. God, I, I thank you today, Lord. I thank you that you, you don't answer all my prayers. It's hard to say it, but I thank you, Lord, because you know the beginning from the end. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, what a beautiful presence of the Lord. Our ushers are getting ready to wait upon you. Your opportunity to conclude this year of giving uh, today in our offering. And uh, we are grateful for every one of you. Your contributions, your offerings, your tithings, your special supports of missionaries and all that you have done through this year has been greatly recognized and we are we are so so thankful for the helping of God Lord we thank you today for the opportunity to give unto you and to this local assembly to your kingdom God Lord would you use it would you anoint it today would you bless the receiving in and the giving in today and we thank you in Jesus name God bless you. You may be seated as you give unto the Lord today. Just a reminder that there is no midweek service this week. And the next song is not a new song. You guys are all familiar with it. It's a simple chorus. But as we were listening, if you're, if you're keeping up with the, the chronological order of the Bible, you're in Revelations. And the other day was when they cast the crowns and they were singing, Holy, Holy, Holy. And, and this just song kept playing. I put it on repeat and it kept playing. And y'all just stand with us in worship as we sing the last worship song of this year. You are worthy of it all.
so good to see everybody here this morning. Amen. Amen. Our last service of 2021. I promise I will have you out before 2022. Amen. That's right. I'll make sure, Brother Gotro, if I go into your office sometime, and I'm there with Brother Arp, and I tell Brother Arp to punch the clown, I'll make sure I'm very specific. So I do not walk away with a bloody nose or something. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, turn to Joshua chapter 10 and verse 8. Amen. Joshua 10 and 8. And that says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not. For I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Amen. Brother Gotro, would you pray? Amen. You may be seated this morning. Amen. Our battles belong to God. Amen. As he saw the messenger approaching, Joshua knew that the message from Gibeon was serious. Amen. They needed help. What had happened was they had made a treaty with Israel. So they now lined up with Israel. And what happened? The enemy came against them. There were five kings in the process of overtaking them. Amen. It's a lot like us. When we make that change, to 
decide we're going to line up with the word of God, oftentimes the enemy comes against us. Joshua, he took his strongest and his bravest men, marched all night from Gilgal to Gibeon. And it's the same with God. When we're in trouble, God, if need be, would march all night to reach us. And as the army approached Gibeon, suddenly Joshua was overcome with the mighty presence of God. Amen. Have you ever been doing something and could just feel the mighty presence of God? Joshua had experienced that before, and his experience con compelled him to stop and heed the voice that was speaking to his heart. He put up his arm and motioned for the company of warriors to come to a stop. And right there in front of the whole army, Joshua fell on his knees. He looked toward heaven and said, Here am I, Lord. Speak to me. And as clear as the blue sky, Joshua heard the voice of God. Do not be afraid of them, for I have given you victory over them. Not a single one of them shall be able to stand up to you. Like with us, God was going to fight the battle. They would just need to keep their heads up and follow the lead of God. Amen. Let's go to a question this morning. Whoa, maybe not. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't do this for a while. The question is this. Share a time when God fought your battle for you. Amen. So have you ever been in a situation that was like a battle and you knew that God took control? Amen. Anybody have a time they want to share? Brother? Amen. We know that we can call on God and he will come through. Brother? Amen. That's good. Yeah. So God taking over situations. Amen. Anybody else? Brother Art? Amen. That's good. Amen. God came through. That is good. Brother? Much more limber than I. <laughs> Amen. You know, God will show us things, open up our understanding. Amen. Praise God. Next, there you go. Thank you, sister. 
Amen. We know that God can take any situation. He can take what the enemy means for harm and turn it around and use it for good. Amen. Joshua's infantry was mighty, but they were no match for five armies. So it was one army going up against five. Amen. Although things may seem impossible, we know that God is in control. God's promise came before Joshua even encountered the enemy. So he was on his way there, and God talked to him. He told him none of his men would be hurt. God would see to it that Joshua would prevail and would win the battle. The promises of God, as you know, are not only for a few in the Bible. Today, we still have promises from God. One thing we can do is search the Word and read about his promises for us. And he has promised to never leave us during rough times. Hebrews 13 and 5, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God has promised to give us his spirit after we repent and take on the precious name of Jesus in baptism. Acts 2 and 38 to 39, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise, it's a promise from God, is to you and to your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And the scriptures contain many more promises. And we can trust the promises of God are true, because the word of God is infallible. And we also, as you know, can listen to the voice of God, God speaking directly to us. Amen. And we know that, the word, that when God speaks to us, it will never contradict his word. Sometimes, perhaps, when we pray, our prayers, instead of a conversation, are maybe a one-way conversation. We may begin with praise and worship, move on to requesting or petitioning God for our needs, then thanking him for his answers. We also need to make sure that we allow time for God to speak to us. 1 Kings 19 and 11 to 13. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent the mountains, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after that, after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in an earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire a still, small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Sometimes we need to be still and listen for the still, small voice of God. Joshua trusted God to keep his promise. So he led his armies towards the enemy. And as the army plunged into battle, the work of God was evident. So he, remember, he was outnumbered five armies to one. The army of Israel surprised the enemy. The enemy became disoriented and confused. They broke out into a run for their lives. Israel chased them and cut many down with the sword. As they approached a hill, huge hailstones rained down on the five armies. More men died from hailstones than from Israel's sword. And as the day progressed, progressed, a holy boldness came upon Joshua. What was happening was the brightest part of the day was passing, so night was going to fall. They would need more light. They were going to see God finish the work. So in the presence of all the people, Joshua asked God for another miracle. He asked God to stop the sun. Let, the, let it stand still over Gibeon, and at the same time, halt the moon. So he was asking God to stop the earth and the moon. And God did, Joshua 10 and 13, and the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, 
until the people had avenged themselves upon the enemies. God will stop heaven and earth in order to accomplish his task if needed. God had done as he promised and defeated the enemy for Joshua. When we surrender our lives to Christ, we experience many benefits beyond our wildest dreams. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we'll have to take a strong stand to be on God's side, God's side, but if we stand firm, God will help us through the most difficult situations. Perhaps times people encounter resistance from their family members when they repent and their lifestyle lines up with biblical truths. These encounters are similar to battles. The enemy can use people to sabotage our walk with God. Amen. It's a beginning of a battle between choosing God and choosing fleshly desires. Many times when we stand firm in our faith, it's a witness to those that oppose us fiercely. And the victory comes when they seek out God for themselves after having witnessed the transformation in our lives. Amen. So let's go to our next slide. How can we show our faith to those who oppose us? Amen. Thoughts on that? If somebody opposes us, how can we show our faith to them? Yeah, keep living for God, so don't let it cause us to falter. Amen. That's good. Brother? Amen. Amen. So they may have insecurities about their walk with God or something else. That may be why they're coming against you. Amen. Anybody else? Thoughts on that? Brother? Right. Amen. Yeah, that's good. And like Jesus said, pray for those that despitefully use you. Brother? Next slide, sister. Amen. Choosing God's way to live for God can be a battle. Amen. But our battles, as we know, belong to God. Temptation still works in us, pulling us perhaps toward the life that we left behind. Amen. We may have addictions that are hard to break. We may have habits that we developed in the world. That will take some time to overcome. And the truth is we all encounter temptation and battles. Amen. And Paul, he addressed this in his own struggle in a letter to the Romans. He observed that when he tried to do good, the opposite would win out. Amen. In many ways, I'm like Paul. Right, Jessica? <laughs> he failed many times, but he did not give up. Amen. He recognized that the life of sin was what was holding him back from doing what God wanted him to do. And the only way to overcome sin is to allow the word of God to penetrate our desires. Amen. We need to read the word and pray to God and allow, allow the Lord to change us. Then we make a firm decision to turn away from the desires of the flesh, choose God's way, and choose to be on God's side. Next slide. Let's go to a question here. What are some practical things we can do to help us turn away from sin? Amen. I don't know if anybody has ever sinned in this room other than myself. 
The Word of God does say all have sinned. So what are some practical ways, practical things that we can do to help us turn away from sin? Amen. Think back to your previous life. What might you have had to have done? Yeah, so don't associate with things that you were doing before. Maybe you need to just turn completely away from certain things. Amen, brother. Yes, yeah, so you may have to leave some friends behind, brother. Yeah, so stay focused on God, follow the Lord's lead, amen. Yeah, those are all necessary things. Anybody else? What's that? Oh, amen. <laughs> Praise God. Anybody else? <laughs> Especially in the South. Next slide, sister. Turning away from sin can be a daunting task. Amen? Anybody ever found it to be daunting? Amen. Temptation is difficult to resist in our own power. And that's a problem. You know, if you don't have the Holy Ghost trying to do it on your own, it's going to be very difficult. We need to surrender to God. The best ammunition against temptation is using the Word of God as our weapon. We can find passages in the Bible that give us the faith to fight. When we test the word against the enemy, the word always comes out victorious. So if you're facing a battle, it's a good time to turn to the word of God. We need to make deliberate, deliberate uh, decisions to resist temptation and sin. We need to set our minds on the ways of God. So in other words... Take control over our thoughts and point them toward God. And the word of God gives us the key to accomplishing this change of mind. Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good rapport, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, Think on these things. Amen. So instead of focusing perhaps on a temptation, think on these things. Sometimes battles will wear us down. When we struggle with sickness, it can be heavy on our faith. After a long physical battle, our faith can sometimes waver. But we should not feel guilty about asking for help. Asking others to pray for us is biblical. Calling on the pastor and others to lay hands on us is perfectly normal. James 5 and 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Amen. In the Bible, we read about a man who could not get to Jesus because he was paralyzed. Four of his friends decided to help him. It was so packed they had to climb up onto the roof, rip a hole in the roof, and let him down. At times, we need others to help. We need others to intercede for us. Amen. So let's go to our next question. What are attributes, or what attributes do people have that you would call on to help you pray if you were in a crisis? So in other words, you know, if there was some sort of crisis, you know, what sort of people might you call on? You know, is it somebody that you know is strong in their faith, a prayer war warrior, somebody you know that does a lot of intercessory prayer? So what sort of people might you call on if something was going on where you really needed help with prayer? Thoughts on that, brother? Yeah, so call your pastor, amen. That's always a good idea, calling your pastor to pray. What else? Anything else, brother? Amen. Yeah, so somebody that you know can really touch God. Amen. You know, sometimes when you're going through a battle, it can be difficult to pray. So you need some help. You know, need to call on others in the church. Amen. And there's 
nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's biblical. Let's go to our next slide. Matthew 18 and 19 says, Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done of them of my Father which is in heaven. So sometimes we need to call on reinforcements. Amen. So that's what they did. They call on Joshua for reinforcements when they were in trouble. Sometimes we need to call on reinforcements to help us pray over a situation. So we should never feel hopeless. God will provide what we need when we need it. He knows where we are. and He even knows the outcome before we ever get there. God is in our tomorrows. Amen. He knows the end from the beginning. God is not tethered to time like we are. He sees tomorrow as though it were today. When we trust in him, we're giving our vision an eternal push. Just like Joshua did when he faced the five armies of the Amorite kings, we may feel outnumbered, but God will come through for us. God had a plan for Israel's victory. Joshua did not know that it would ra rain down hailstones from heaven upon the enemy, but God knew it. Joshua did not know he would boldly ask God to stop the sun and the moon, but God already knew it. He knew it because he was already there. Let's go to a next question. How does knowing God has, you, God has already been in your present situation, impact your response to God. So if you know that God already knows what's happening and what's going to happen, how might that res impact your response to God? Anybody have ideas on that? Sister? Yes. Amen. It's good. Yes. Right. Yeah, that's good. So sometimes praying for others. God works in your life. That's good. Yeah. Even I forget about what's going on when you're helping others like that. Amen. Let's go to the next slide. Let's, uh, let's gather around the front maybe in closing if you feel compelled. We know that we can trust in God because we know that God already knows our situations. You know, God is already there. In many cases, he even deals with the situation before it ever happens. God is in our future fighting for us. He's there preparing the way for us to come through our battle with victory. We know who to turn to when our battle may seem hopeless. Why? Because God is our ally. God is on our side. Even when we were unfaithful, God remained faithful to us. You know, when we repent of our sins, as you know, ask God to forgive us for everything we've done in our past, bad decisions we made, the chains we allowed to bind us, the people we may have hurt, rejected, and all the times we turned away from him, we know that God did not walk away. God was still there waiting on us to come to him. God is always faithful to forgive us and to wash away the stain of sin left on our hearts and in our lives. Amen. We know that God remains faithful even when we make mistakes. When we learn to turn to God time and time again, when the battle gets heavy, that increases our trust, our faith in Him. Amen. John 15 and 7, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you 
If we trust in God like with Joshua, he'll move heaven and earth for us to be victorious. Amen. Let's go to the Lord. Let's reach out to God. Amen. Praising him. Thanking you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness to us, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. I thank you, sweet Holy Ghost. Lord, I praise you today. I thank you for being faithful, Lord. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Don't you just lift up your hands unto the Lord. Would you thank him for this day, for his blessings? Would you thank him for his strength? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm an overcomer. Turn to your other neighbor and tell him, I am an overcomer. Amen. God's going to give us the strength. Amen. Be encouraged. Amen. Walk in your area with the idea that you are you are victorious. You are victorious. Amen. God bless each and every one of you.